Hi, I'm Dennis Fullerton, and today we're going to cover some more basics of the guitar fingerboard. First of all, we might as well begin with tuning up the guitar. As you recall from last meeting, we uh, used this device here, the old tuning fork, it's A440, and by just tapping it on your knee, placing it on the instrument like so, you hear that tone, the A440, and you can also place it up by your head, hear the tone. So what we'll do first off, take your third finger, place it on the fourth string at the seventh fret, just over the fret though, we don't want to defeat that harmonic, and just pick the note, you hear that harmonic, use the tuning fork. And you can hear that the notes are in tune, the tuning fork and the note. And if you recall, when tuning up, we start with the second finger, the fifth fret of the sixth string, playing the A notes. Okay. And we go across. And we play harmonics, say, say notes. We also have octaves where we play, say, E open against E at the seventh fret. We can go across. And then we have our other octaves. All those notes of that chord, which is the same as the open notes of the guitar. Okay, this time we're going to get into identifying the notes. Some quick ways to know what the notes are from the open position all the way up through the 12th fret. 12th fret is the same as the open position, but it is an octave higher. So to begin with, let's play the open first string. And that's an E note, open. Now we're going to play E on the second string at the fifth fret which is your dot location. Or when you're tuning up, it's the same notes, E and E. Now we'll go up to the ninth fret on the third string, and we'll play that note, E against. Now I'm bending the note. You can hear it's just a touch flat. We'll bend it up. Okay, and it's the same note in essence. And all the way up here at the 14th fret on the 4th string. Same as the open 1st string. And then we'll go to the next spot, which is at the 19th fret on the 5th string. Now that, E. Now I'll move slowly back down from 19th fret E the 14th fret E on the 4th string, down here to the 9th fret E on the 3rd string, and then down to the 5th fret E on the 2nd string. Now we can move right through those fairly quickly. And now it's a little flat, we can bring that up just a wee bit. Now with the B notes, which is your open second string, and recall at the fourth fret on the third string we have B. Same notes as when you were tuning up. Okay, now we'll move up to the ninth fret on the fourth string. Same note as the open second string. Now we'll move up to the 14th fret on the 5th string. B, B. And from there up to the 19th fret on the 6th string. If you have 19 frets, you'll have a B note there also. 
and we move back down again from B, same note as there, as there, as there, as the open second string. Now with G, take that open third string, we play G at the fifth fret of the fourth string, same note, and we go up to the tenth fret on the fifth string, same note, and we go to the fifteenth fret on the sixth string, same note, and we'll go back down. Now you hear something kind of unusual, uh, what is referred to as timber. A timber, in essence, is the difference in the resonant qualities of any given note. Uh, for example, G on the third string as to G on the fourth string. Or, say, G on the third string as to G on the fifth string. Now that is caused, uh, particularly with the guitar, being the same note, you have thickness of string, which affects the timber or tonality in that sense. Also, the distance between the note that you play and the bridge of the guitar, that distance between the bridge and the note played, plus the, the thickness of the string, all plays a part on timber. Now let's go on from there at D, open D. D4 string, playing D on the 5th string at the 5th fret, and then we move up to the 10th fret on the 6th string, D. Okay, and then D, 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 and then A, naturally when you were tuning up, A and A, okay? Now we have octaves all around, we covered last time using the E's, you know. Which will give you all four octaves on the guitar. Okay, let's move on to some open chord positions that will make it easy to identify the notes on the guitar fingerboard. For example, the E major chord, which you undoubtedly know, but the notes of that chord uh, are from the sixth string to the first string, E, B, E, G sharp, B, and E. And another easy chord that you know is the A major chord, which has the notes A, E, A, C sharp, you can also add the E on the sixth string. Another easy chord that I'm sure you know is the D major chord. And that has the notes of A, D, A, D, and F sharp. Bear in mind the positions of those notes and where your fingers are and the notes that you're playing. And also G major, that formation which you're certainly familiar with. G, B, open D, open G, open B, and G. Okay, and then another chord that you're familiar with is the B7 chord, where you're playing B, D sharp, A, B, and F sharp. Now all those chords have those particular notes. We also can get into bar chords identify notes. For example, this F major bar chord. Okay, the notes we're playing there are F, C, F, A, C, and F. Now we can move that formation up two frets, for example, to the G fret, and then we're going to be playing a G major chord. The notes in that chord are G, D, G, B, D, and G. We can move that up another whole tone to the A position and play an A major chord. Now 
that chord has the notes of A, E, A, C sharp, E, and A. Now those are the same notes in essence as the open A major formation. Now if we take the position from A here in the open, and we want to go up one fret, we have to go like so and make a bar chord. Now there we have a B flat major chord. And the notes in there are like F, B flat, F, B flat, D, and F. But your root tone is the B flat on the fifth string, first fret. Okay, now we can take that up a whole tone and have a C major. We have C, G, C, E, G. We can take it up another whole tone and we can have a D major chord. We have D, A, D, F sharp, and A. We can take it up another whole tone. We can have an E major chord. We're going E, B, E, G sharp, and B. Now we can even extend that chord all the way up and get the full range, which is similar to those octaves I played for you a minute ago. Full chord. Now that's an easy method to identify note locations. practice that going up the fingerboard, down the fingerboard, using both those formations. Very easy. Another way to identify notes is by just name, naming them across the strings. For example, in the open position, you have E, A, D, G, B, and E, sixth string to the first string. Okay, we come up one fret, we have F, B flat, Okay, E flat or D sharp, uh, G sharp or A flat. We have C and F. We can take it up here to, for example, G. We have G, C, F, B flat, D, and G. It's so on, up to, all the way up the fingerboard, name the notes. Another way is to do it by string, moving up the fingerboard, where you have open E, F, F sharp or G flat. G, G sharp or A flat, A, A sharp or B flat, B, C, C sharp or D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, and E octave. And you can go back down the strings. Now that means, in essence, you start at the open position, move up the fingerboard till you reach the 12th fret, and then move back down the fingerboard on that string, naming the notes. Okay, let's go on now to an exercise, which is really easy, and it's fun, and you can also identify notes that way and have a good time doing it. Let's begin with open E, sixth string. Okay, now we're gonna use all four fingers. That's one, two, three, four. Real simple. Okay, we're gonna play open E, then we're going to play F with the first finger, F sharp with the second finger, G with the third finger, and G sharp with the little finger. Those are the four fingers we're going to use. So let's work on that one string for the minute. the strings. We'll take it up to the fourth string to the E note. What this is is a chromatic exercise. The way it should be played as far as pick is like down, back, down, back, or down, up, down, up in your picking. Uh, if you want to use all down strokes with your pick, go ahead. Whichever is easiest for you. So we're going to play E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, open A string. Okay, and then we're going to go A sharp, B, 
C, C sharp, open D string, D sharp, E. Okay, let's take that again. I'll do it real slow. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Okay, let's move back down with all those same notes. E, D sharp, B, C sharp, C, B, A sharp, A, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, E. Okay, let's try it up and then down. that chromatic and go all the way up to the first string. We'll carry it up through the fourth and then we'll start there taking it up to the first string. We'll start again. Okay, there's E. Now we'll go to F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, open first string. Let's try that again, starting with E on the fourth string, second fret, second finger. So we'll go E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, open B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Let's go back down now. E, D sharp, D, C sharp, C, B, A sharp, A, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, and E. Now we'll go all the way down to the bottom and all the way back to the top and all the way back down. So we'll start at E, D sharp, D, C sharp, C, B, a sharp, A, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, and E. Now, I'm not going to bother to name the notes this time, but you practice that. It's a real quick way to learn all the notes. It's good practice. One coordinates your left hand with your right hand, and it helps you play each note accurately and clearly. Plus, you may want to use a chromatic scale sometime in your runs. You know, you want to be playing, so you like. That will take us right into a major scale, an E major scale. You already know that that note's F sharp, and that that note's G sharp, and that that note's B, and that that note's C sharp, and that note's D sharp, and that note's E. Those are all the notes of an E major scale. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Let's take that same E major scale from the four string E note and take it up to E on the second string. We'll cover the octave from the four string to the second string, E to E, major scale. Second finger on E, where we left off previously. Take it. 
Let's take that up again. And the notes are E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp. Second finger, little finger. First finger, second finger, little finger. First finger, third finger, little finger. Okay, let's move to the key of F now and play major scale using the second finger on F, first fret. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. Okay, let's take it up again. that pattern using the second finger. Now what we can do is use the first finger off of the bar position. Okay, and this can be the same major scale, but a different way to play it, same notes. Now listen and you'll hear the same notes. You also saw a fingering variation. The notes are F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and F. We can take that up again from this point. Same way that we did the E, same pattern. Now I'd like to give you some exercises to work on. Do you remember our chromatic exercise we did? Well, let's come up here to G, the third fret of the sixth string. This is really simple. Use all four fingers, and you progress laterally across the fingerboard. And it's not chromatic, but it's just an exercise. And then you're picking, you'll use a downstroke, and an upstroke, a downstroke, an upstroke, and so on. No real musical value there other than it being an exercise. up a fret. Take it up a fret. Can I just practice that up? fingerboard, down the fingerboard, whatever you feel is best, whatever is easiest for you. Don't try to do it fast right off the bat unless you've got the coordination together. That's best to start slow and gradually work your speed up from there. <clears throat> Another exercise we can do, real good for your dexterity, begin with your second finger on the G note, sixth string, third fret. Your first finger will play the B note on the fifth string, second fret. So it's... Okay, then from that point, we'll move the fourth finger to A on the sixth string and the third finger to 
C sharp. Okay, now the way that exercise can work is by picking down, up, down, up, down stroke, up stroke, and so forth. Now what we can also do is move up the fingerboard and then back down the fingerboard, doing it slowly. above from where we began. You want to go back down. I'd like to give you one more exercise to work with today. Take your first finger and put it on G. Now, somewhat the same as the others, but we're going to change the pattern just slightly. Take the first finger there, second finger there, change strings, third finger, fourth finger. Let's do, go through that part of it again. And then we'll go to the fifth string. down, up with your pick. So let's run through that. Same thing, we'll move up the fingerboard. And so on. Now you can practice those exercises any way you choose. The main thing to do is to coordinate your left hand with your picking with your right hand, in other words, and play slowly to begin with, then gradually increase your speed. If you make, you know, play a sour note or you, in essence, make a goof, uh, don't worry about it, you know, just start over, do it again, you'll get it right, just practice it. Well, that should be enough to keep you busy till we get together next time. And we'll cover key signatures, more scales, new chords for you. We'll get into some solo patterns. So, till next time, keep playing.